We decided about a year ago that we wanted to have a second child. So I found out I was pregnant almost exactly this time a year ago. And in July, my doctor offered an option to do a blood test that could tell gender, but it also happened to tell many other things. So I got the call um, from my doctor. I was actually at a work conference in Portland um, on July 13th. And so I was there, I was eating lunch, I was in a crowded room. I was just kind of, hey, you know, did you find out gender? You know, tell us what it is. And so she was speaking really slow and telling me that there was other things she needed to explain to me. And so it took about 10 minutes for her to kind of explain to us that we tested positive for a chromosome disorder called trisomy 18. And basically she finally got to a point where she explained that this was a fatal condition, there was nothing we could do, and that I needed to get back to Dallas. They call trisomy 18 incompatible with life. And so the recommendation with most doctors is to terminate the pregnancy at that point. And that was just something I couldn't do. I mean, we, neither of us believed that that was right. So we went against that doctor's orders and uh, I was lucky that my doctor like really supported me with the decision. And then really from then on, it was complete support by my work, Jonas's work, our church and our family. And that, I mean, that's what got us through it. I think to us, our connect group became a safe haven because they were there for anything we needed. So we were constantly getting, you know, emails from them if we needed help. It was an opportunity every Sunday that when we met, I knew that these people knew our situation. They weren't going to, you know, hound us and bother us about it and ask lots of questions, but they also were sensitive enough to understand and know that, you know, we could start crying at any point during the week or um, need that extra support. I think it was the first time in my life that I had experienced a situation where I really had to just completely rely on God and decide that, you know, this was not an accident. It was not um, something that we could prevent. It's not something we could fix. I think as a mother, you always just want to fix everything for your kids, and we couldn't. I mean, there was no way we could. Um, and so I think it was the first time that I just completely relied on my faith. And so a lot of times when I was either telling my story or talking to people, there was like this look of amazement of like, how are you even at work? How are you functioning? How are you coaching in volleyball? And I was like, well, because this is like, once you put something in God's hands, you put it in his hands and then you say, all right, you know, I'm going to let this play out. However, it's supposed to play out. Obviously, this is the purpose that you have for me. When we finally had her, I kind of thought, if she makes it alive, like how will I handle this? How will I handle losing her? How will I handle if she survives and she has severe disabilities and how can we make it? And every step of the way, God just, you know, every day was like, trust, it's okay, you can do it. I think the one thing that we did very uniquely during her life was we celebrated every day. So we sang her happy birthday at the end of every day. It's like you were counting hours instead of days and weeks. But it was, and I was in the boat, and she came out. I love Annabelle. And that final time it happened, it was myself, Jonas, and my sister. And we just knew, like, it wasn't going to happen. You know, she was getting weaker. Um, she'd kind of stopped eating. Um, so, you know, obviously that day was ridiculously hard and getting through that, but I was not meant, you know, to watch her first steps or like do anything else. That was it. That was our time. Um, and my sister started a Facebook group called Annabelle's Army. And at first it was just supposed to be for like friends and family to follow what was going on in the hospital. Um, and it grew up to about 8,500 followers. And um, it was a great way of like praising God through our storm. And it was a great way to prove that like, even though this child had a very short life, it had meaning. And I think that it really 
made a lot of people look at life differently and it made a lot of people look at tragedy differently because of how we were viewing it and how like God was teaching us along the way to view it. And then really especially for planning the memorial service, I mean so many members from our connect group came to work and help and serve food and drinks and help set up and there was so much behind the scenes that happens with something like that that you really start to appreciate what other people are doing for you because we were in a situation to where we couldn't really function well because it's super easy to be you know feeling like you don't need help when everything is going well in your life but when it doesn't seem like anything is going well and everything is going terribly you have to realize that if you give everything to God, you would be shocked what will happen when you can finally be on the other side of the tragedy and look at the situation from the top of the hill instead of the bottom of the hill.